Hello, Simple Church family. Wow, it is great to be back for another year of teaching and really just getting to hang out with everyone on this platform. Now, I know we don't actually get to see each other in person, but I do hope that we get to actually connect throughout the teachings that we do over this year. If you ever want to reach out to me, I'm always happy to do so. I'm not going to lie, I feel like we're in for a big one this week. As I was prepping this message, I opened up my Bible and heading uh, the heading over the section of our uh, passage today is have the attitude of Christ. Yikes. <laughs> Already this passage is a call up to myself because I know that often it can feel difficult to have the attitude of Christ. But we are going to dive deep into the scripture and see how encouraging and how humbling this passage can be for us. The first part of the passage starts off by asking us some really big questions. I love big questions. I love how the New Living Translation puts these questions. Number one, is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Two, is there any comfort from his love? Number three, is there any fellowship together in the spirit? And number four, are your hearts tender and compassionate? I know that for myself, personally, these are questions that I have wrestled with before. There have been moments in my life where I've asked myself these questions. Uh, if there, the question of if there's any encouragement to belonging in Christ. You know, those dark moments in life when God feels very far away, maybe this question has felt all too real to you. The, qu the other question that stood out to me is, are your hearts tender and compassionate? I currently work in a role in customer service, and let me tell you, <laughs> I'm sure some of you can relate, that it can be extremely hard to be someone full of tenderness and compassion when you are met with anger and frustration. Maybe this is something that you experience in your own workplace. The Apostle Paul, who wrote this letter to the Philippians, continues on in this letter and says, don't be selfish, don't try to impress others, but instead be humble. Don't only look out for yourself, but also look out for others. That us as Christians must have the same attitude that Jesus has. The main part of the message it, that I want to focus on is Paul's description of who Jesus is. And I want to read it out with you from the New Living Translation because I just think it's so good. Starting in verse 6, it says this, Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the, high, to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess, declare sorry, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. How encouraging is this? If Jesus is new to you, you have to know that this is his story. This is the reason we get to have a forever relationship with him. I, it is crazy to think that the son of God came to earth to be thought of as one of the lowest people in society. He even associated himself with outcasts and wanderers to make himself known to them and then died a criminal death, a crucifixion on the cross, so painful to pay the ultimate price for our sins and then was raised to life three days later so that we might be able to have a forever relationship with him in heaven. For those who are watching, who may be very familiar with the church world, Maybe you've grown up in it. Maybe you've known Jesus for a really long time and you, you know who his character is. This is our reminder, a reminder of the power of Jesus. 
Paul writes this letter to the Philippians as a reminder to the church about who Jesus is and why it is important that we start to act like him. Before we move on from this part, I want to challenge you. Reading this retelling of Jesus' story can have such a great impact on us if we let it. It can also just pass over us and not have an impact if we don't want it to. It can go in one ear and out the other if we let it. So take time this week as individuals and in your groups to read through this retelling of Jesus' story and just let it sit with you. Let it just wash over you. Reflect on it as you head into your workplace, this, your workplace this week or maybe your school. Let it be impactful and let it change you. The whole point of Paul retelling this story is that it has an impact on us. So much so that it completely changes our behavior and lets us become more like who Jesus is. We are called to be people who are humble putting the focus on others and not looking out for only our own interests, but for the interests of others. Humility is hard in our culture because honestly, we are constantly pushed to be driven, pushed to strive for more and not let anyone else get in the way. And normally that means that we have to step over people to get where we want to be. But instead, take time this week to slow down See opportunities to lift others up. And maybe that's in your school by helping that classmate who really isn't understanding what the teacher is saying to them and saying to the class. So you reach out to help them and ensure that they succeed. Now, this is the important part. Maybe even if they aren't already a part of your friend group, maybe that's reaching out to a colleague who is very stressed about the projects that they have going on at work. Maybe you offer to have lunch with them and just become a listening ear to them. You might not be able to directly help them, but you can be an encourager and a support to them. Verse 13 ends our passage this way. It says, God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. As we are coming into the fall, we may be experiencing a lot of change. The summer can bring disruption to our routines and fall can bring stability and also a lot of change as well. It's an opportunity for new. And when our routine changes and we are figuring out things that we're not really sure how to put them in our routine, it can be challenging to remember God in the midst of all of it. So let's use verse 13 as our reminder that God is with us through it all. In fact, it tells us that he is working in us, that he has enabled us. He gives us the power to do what pleases him. Taking on the attitude of Christ, being able to live it out in our everyday is not something that we're expected to do just by ourselves. And in our own strength, God is actually working in us and he's working with us every single step of the way. And not only that, he is providing us the power to do what pleases him. When we call out to God, when we ask him to help us, he listens and he responds. He gives us the power to live humbly each day, to lift others up and to be tender and compassionate. And if you're wondering, why does God like do this? What does, what does God do this for? It's because of his love for us. It's the love that continues to be demonstrated after the resurrection of Jesus. It's the love that shows us that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Friends, this is a really important reminder for us this week. Use Philippians 2 as a reminder that God has enabled us. He has given us the power to take on his attitude and that he is working in you. I hope you have a great week and I'm very much looking forward to the rest of the teachings that we have over the next year. Have a great week.